everyone. Welcome to our virtual event, Discover the IB at Fairview. I'm Shifa, your host for today's session, along with my colleague, Mr. Jonathan and Ms. Nabila. All right, so we will be able to assist you should you have any trouble throughout this session. We will open up a question and answer session at the end of our talk. You may unmute your mic to ask questions. I would also like to introduce our line of principals and the head of campus that is also here with us today. So um, we'll begin with Ms. T, our senior principal for Johor Bahru campus. Hello, hello everybody. Good afternoon. All right, um, next is Mr. Ariel, the principal for Johor Bahru campus. Good afternoon, everybody. As well as Ms. Michelle Lum, the head of campus for Epo campus. Hello. Just came over from FB. Yeah. All right. Hi, Ms. Michelle. All right. So, um, thank you for attending our session today. Um, and a warm welcome to our guest of honor, who is also a Fairview parent, Dr. Anara Amirova, and our student ambassador. Aisari Amirova. Hello, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Happy Teacher's Day. Our warmest congratulations. Thank you very much. We really appreciate for all your contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so moving on to the next uh, part of this uh, agenda. Our presenter today is Dr. Vincent Chien, the principal for KL Campus. Dr. Vincent Chen is a medical graduate from Manchester University and a former psychiatry registrar. He is actively involved in IB Diploma Program and manages the IT infrastructure at the group. He regularly speaks at conferences and conducts workshops in the areas of educa educational pedagogy, leadership, technology, family business, orga organizational change, holistic education, teachers' development, and also skill development in school. So, without further ado, I will now pass the floor to Dr. Vincent Chien. Thank you very much, uh, Shaza. Um, so, welcome, everybody. Um, okay. So, what we begin with is, um, what are the key concerns that parents has spoken to us about, about education. So generally we've, we found that there are four main sentences that we hear a lot about. The learning experience is old fashioned and does not prepare my child adequately for their future. Uh, my child is not engaged with this education. He isn't excited to learn. The current education system doesn't develop my child's character and values. And will her education give her, her an advantage to get to university? This in mind, uh, I'll share with you a little bit about Fairview. So Fairview International School has over 40 years of education excellence and is present in five campuses uh, across Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur, where I'm based, Subang Jaya, Penang, Johor, and in Ipoh. We're also present in the UK, uh, in Scotland, in a place called the Bridge of Allen, where we have a lovely campus over there. The wisdom uh, and our strategy, educational strategy um, is imparted to us by our Governor's Council. I'd love to introduce who they are. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey Beard, the Director General Emeritus of the IEB. Uh, that would be the former uh, Director General. Now, the Director General of the International Baccalaureate is a very prestigious position. He's basically the number one man in the International Baccalaureate Organization. We're also led by Professor Emeritus Tan Sri Dato, Dr. Syed Jalaluddin, who was the former Vice Chancellor of UPM, and Professor Emeritus Dato, Dr. Mohammed Sham, uh, who was the former Vice Chancellor of UKM, and Mr. Daniel Chen. So, who are we? If you want to really remember us very carefully, uh, very easily, uh, it's very easy to remember us as the IB specialists of Malaysia. We run the International Baccalaureate Program a unique program that aims to prepare our students not for an exam like many other traditional education formats but for the future their pedagogical styles are very different 
from other traditional rote learning curricula. Even the IGCSE is still very, very rote learning in its methods and exam based as well. And I'm going to share with you a lot about how the IB is different and how we do things at Fairview differently. So first, I'd like to address, uh, I'd like to share with you about what we do at Fairview by going through what we hear from our parents and how do we help them with this, uh, these challenges. So the first two ones, the learning experience is old fashioned and does not prepare my child adequately for their future. My child is not engaged with this education. He isn't excited to learn. This is probably the most common problem that our parents have. And they, they share this with us all the time. And as a fellow parent myself, I can easily recognize that this is a major issue that we need to address in our children. Because if they're not prepared for their future, then what are we preparing them for? And if they're not engaged with their education, they won't find that love for learning and will end up having to push them along the way, which is not the way that education should work. Now, I'd like to begin with a sharing from one of our student ambassadors. I'd like to introduce Isari Amirov. Uh, he's an MYP, a middle years three student, equivalent to our form three in Malaysia. Um, as a student in KL for over four years, he's an active member of our student council, uh, winning a silver award at the Asia Pacific Arts Festival. He's in our World Scholars Cup, WSC, uh, sorry, uh, World Scholars Cup team and she's a global round qualifier as well. He's a wonderful swimmer and a participant in numerous competitions. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce Aisari. Aisari, the floor is yours. Would you like, would you be able to share with us a little bit about your experience at Fairview International School? Good afternoon, I'm very happy to be here. And sure, I'll, I'll share a lot of the experience I had. So when I came in Fairview, few years back, I can tell there have been a lot of, I, I was very different from the moment I am right now. Uh, I have grown a lot in terms of my IB learner profile, in terms of the new languages that I have learned, such as English, Mandarin, Bahasa Malayu, as in terms of new amazing people that I have found and met, uh, such as my friends, the teachers that I have met in Fairbury. So, uh, I have tried over the years, I have tried a lot in new different sectors that I haven't been to. In those past years, I have tried myself in swimming, film taking, uh, or event organization, leader skills, and many, many other sectors that the opportunity to try them, I have received from Fairview. So additionally, I really want to share about my experience of the new instrument that I have gained in Fairview, such as which is flute, and I'm I'm very happy to that I have chosen to play that flute because uh, to play that instrument because it is uh, itself is a very unique and very interesting instrument. But sometimes flute can be challenging. But I believe that it's it's how we develop, we overcome those challenges, and become better. Additionally, I want to outline the amazing experience of expeditions that we go to every year. And I, I'm, I really enjoy expeditions and it's something very, very unique to Fairview and uh, the experience you gain, gain from expeditions is, is something truly valuable because on expeditions, I've been able to see a lot of unique people and unique places that I never thought I would go to. And the educational value and the analysis that we get from expeditions is, is very valuable. And additionally, the memories, the very fond memories uh, of bonding with my friends and uh, with classmates is very, very remarkable. Uh, what I want to also say is about the Fairview community, about all my friends I've met, uh, about all my teachers, and I want about all of the stuff in Fairview. And I want to say thank you for all this community over past years that I've been around with. And uh, I'm really happy that I have met those people. And then I want to, in the uh, upcoming of the Teachers' Day, I want to say a big thank you to all the teachers that have been supporting me over those years that helped me to develop, to grow personally. And as a, as a member of student council, 
I want to, we're organizing an event for the upcoming Teachers Day, and I want to additionally thank all the student council for letting me participate in a lot of activities and thank student council that we this year have been very productive and with the help and the hard work of the all student council members we've been able to or make a lot of events and organize a lot of a lot of uh, fun activities for the students at Fairview. And overall once again I want to say thank you to all the people who contributed and for my growth and also thank you to Fairview. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, I'm sorry. Just can, can I pose a question to you about your classrooms uh, and your learning experience? Can you share with us about how your learning uh, is different at Fairview as compared to your previous school? Uh, what I enjoy in uh, IB also, uh, I want to say that the ATL skills that we learn in classrooms are um, something very interesting because uh, if you truly go deep in them and you think about them and actually try on on your own, like it's, they're, they're, they can be really helpful in terms of uh, overcoming procrastination or achieving your personal goals or um, uh, doing your homework, for example, or assessments or formative assessments. Excellent. So what you're sharing about is the ATL skill program or our skill development program that we have here at Fairview. Thank yeah. you very much for that, Isari. Um, so I'll just move on uh, and share a little bit about what Isari is talking about, uh, because unfortunately, many of our participants may not know the, the jargon like ATL skills. So I'm going to go through them nice and slow for everybody to understand. Um, so how do we address the issue of uh, a lack of engagement and preparing our children for the future. Um, I'm going to share a couple of points. Uh, the first one is that Fairviewans take ownership of their learning. Learning in the Fairview is active, not rote learning or passive learning. And we do this through three key pedagogies that we use at Fairview. One is called inquiry. The other is called concept-based learning. And the third one is critical thinking. Now, these are big words. So I'm going to really shave it down really easy for everyone to understand. So I'm going to go to the left first. Inquiry-based learning is about learning by solving a problem. So instead of a teacher just yakety yakety away, yakety away at you in the front of the classroom and a student just listening and listening and trying to absorb everything but like a sponge, our students engage uh, in the learning by solving problems. It's a student-centered way using hands-on activities, uh, presentations, and what we specially call celebrations of learning. Um, we, uh, I'm going to highlight the celebrations of learning a little bit more. In a normal uh, classroom, a student's knowledge is assessed by pen and paper traditionally. But if I learn something about the lungs or the body, the best way for me to demonstrate my learning is to share this with other people. And this is what we call celebrations of learning. And what you see in the picture is uh, uh, an example of how students share with their parents what they have learned and other people around the school community as well. So if I learn about the lungs, it's not good enough. It's not realistic enough for me to just fill in an exam paper to let people understand that I know what the lungs are all about or the body systems. I need to talk them through it. I need to show them a picture and tell them about it. And this is the way that we celebrate our students learning by letting them teach other people because one of the best ways of learning is by teaching. And that's what we call inquiry-based learning. Um, the second thing that we do really wonderfully is called concept-based learning. You hear people a lot, uh, you hear people saying a lot of the phrase, I like to understand, not memorize. And this is a key concept. Um, in our classrooms, our students are encouraged to learn and understand uh, the concepts. Concepts are words like uh, conflict, are words like symmetry, as opposed to memorizing the facts, they learn the concept. And once they grasp the concept, they understand it, the facts are very easy to carry forward. The third important thing that we do in our classroom is critical thinking. It's about applying the knowledge you gain in more and more uh, complex patterns. And you see this little triangle over here, you see the word remembering, that's pretty much the same as memorizing and regurgitating you during an exam. 
which is what most schools do. But in our IB program, we go all the way up that ladder. Our students not just remember the facts, they also understand, they demonstrate their understanding of facts. They apply what they have learned. They analyze what they've learned. They evaluate choices and they create new things. The goal is to use all of your thinking skills well, not just remembering stuff. So in this way, our students realize that the learning that takes place here actually makes sense with what they will do later on. It connects with them so much better than them just sitting in a classroom and absorbing like a sponge uh, in that traditional format. The second important thing that I'm going to share with you to really make our kids engage is our students collaborate, not compete. In most schools, the way they get their students to be passionate or to work harder is to give them rankings and pit them against one another so that only one student wins. But that's not the way the world works. When we enter the office, when we enter the real world, if, our, if we enter that environment with an attitude of competition, we will never be able to work with our teammates and our colleagues, and we will never achieve great things because we stand alone. Right from young, our students are taught very importantly that in order to achieve great things, you need to bring people along with you and you need to collaborate. And here's a wonderful example of our girls collaborating to finish off a small project. And these collaboration activities happen right through all of our classrooms. A great example of our attitude towards this collaboration is Model United Nations. We chose to, to do Model United Nations where students uh, pretend to be delegates from the UN and work together to create resolutions. And what they do is they have to collaborate. In the moment they compete with one another, they instantly fall and they learn very quickly the concept that collaboration is the key to the future, not competition. And for this reason, we do not do debates in the school because that encourages a very different kind of mentality. A debate is a win-lose mentality, whereas collaboration is the win-win mentality. Fairviewers are also skilled. Isari spoke of the ATL skills. We have a special skill development program in our school. Uh, concepts like the Cornell note-taking method that help you learn how to take notes better. A special concept called the Toolman's uh, argument construction method. Situational leadership here in the middle. Uh, another uh, very, very unique leadership model that's taught to MBA level students, Hofstede's cultural dimensions, public speaking based on TED Talks. These are what we call skill models. And these skill models are research-based models taught at the highest level MBA school. And what do we do in Fairview? We teach them in every class. We assess them right from grade one in an intentional, systematic and structured way. Many other schools will tell you that, yes, we teach our kids presentation skills, but sadly, if you scratch beneath the surface and ask them, how do they teach these skills? The most they will ever tell you is, well, we put them in, a t uh, we put them in front of the classroom and we just get them to present until they get better. And that's not the way to improve at skills. skills skill development does have repetition involved. And yes, it's true that practice makes perfect, but if you don't know how to do it right in the first place, you'll just be practicing a bad habit. So our program teaches our students strong, powerful, skilled models. We teach it explicitly step by step, and then they practice it again and again and again, right from grade one all the way to the IB diploma program. Assessment at Fairview is also meaningful and relevant. One of the worst things that puts students off is when they see assessment that doesn't make any sense. In the workplace, you do not do exams. You present, you pitch ideas, you propose, they're KPIs, you're given feedback. So the, the traditional exam-based model doesn't make sense. I'm gonna share with you two wonderful things that we do. One is meaningful rubric-based assessments. And the second is future relevant assessment methods. The first one, rubric-based assessments. If we ask a student to draw a picture of a ship, how do we give them feedback? Very often in traditional arts classes, you'll get a B 
a C, or even worse, a 60%. The problem is a student then asks, what does 60% mean? Do you mean I, I, I did 60% of the things? Is it 60% good? What, what is 60%? It doesn't make any sense. How do I get better? You just gave me a 60%. Uh, and it's very, very difficult to understand how to improve. If assessment has no function but to make us feel bad, then sure, that method works. But we use something called a rubric-based assessment. But we use the student, we ask the student to draw the picture. And then after that, we give him a score on this rubric descriptor. And then the student reads it and says, oh, I got a three or a four. In order to get a five or a six, we need a detailed ship. I only had a limited attempt at the ship. It has two funnels, not one funnel. It has six windows. Ah, and I have to include an anchor with the C. Now I understand how to get better. So you can see that applying a rubric-based assessment makes it more meaningful and helps the student grow rather than just giving them 20%, 60%. And the student going, what did I do wrong? I don't understand. The other aspect of our assessment that makes it so relevant is our assessment mimics real life formats. I shared with you about the celebration of learning where students present what they've learned, uh, the, the culmination of all of their learning as opposed to just writing exams. We still do have written exams in the school. Those have a place and are still important, but we need to assess our students from multiple lens and that's what we do. Some assessments come in the form of group work, some assessments come in the form of presentations, some others come in the form of written reports. But don't these methods reflect what happens in the workplace? Your boss asks you, asks you to present your updates so far or your project. Your boss asks you to work in a team. Your boss asks you to give him a detailed report about your findings on a certain project. These are all future relevant methods that we use. So therefore, to summarize this important point, learning at Fairview is active, not passive. It's about solving problems, understanding, and using your critical thinking skills. It's collaborative, not competitive. It's full of skills and it's assessed meaningfully. The next problem that I, we see parents can uh, share with us about is that the current education doesn't develop my child's character and values. If you in a traditional school where the only motivation they can use is typically a competitive attitude, it's everybody for themselves. And this breeds horribly, horrible bad habits. If you don't actively develop values in children during those important formative years, they just end up going, becoming adults with terrible habits and values ingrained into them from, the, from those 13 years of education. What do we do at Fairview? We use what we call the learner profile. Our students, our Fairviewers are centered in values. The first thing they do is we say, here are 10 important values everybody needs to understand. And these values aren't just for the wall. Like the video said, they are woven into every single classroom. So let's say we talk about genetics in biology class, the teacher will bring forward the, the question and say, let's talk about being principled. Is genetic cloning principled? Does it adhere to the principles of humanity? Is it okay to create life like that? And we'll have a discussion about it. And yes, there's no, there's no end point answer. There's no right or wrong here, but the students need to practice talking about their ideas, their values, their feelings, what they hold dear, so that they can spend time and develop a sense of which values that they buy into and create that character. Furthermore, all Fabians discover happiness, gratitude and purpose through service to others. So the service component is an integral part of our curriculum and all students go through this and we find that in serving others, we become free. The next important question that a lot of parents ask us is, will her education give her an advantage to get to university? I'll share with you, the IB is preferred by top universities. These are three top universities, Harvard, MIT, and Duke. And as you can read, they don't just like the IB, they love it. 
send us prepared students a la IB. It is the best high school prep school, a prep curriculum an American school can offer. This comes from MIT, from Harvard. The IB is well known to us for excellent preparation. Success in the IB program correlates well with success at Harvard. No other pre-university program has received this sort of acclaim before. And our students do very, very well. In our recent IB diploma program, 30% of our students scored an equivalent of an A, uh, a uh, an A, and 25% scored, scored an A in the extended essay. 15% scored over 45, 40 points out of 45 points, which is an incredible amount. Only 5% of the world managed to get to that kind of score. We have a 100% pass rate. And as opposed to the world average of 29 points, we have an average of 34 points and a five-year track average of 35.5 points, which is equivalent to four A stars in the UCAS tariffs. Our students clearly do very well and they go to the most wonderful places as well. This list you can see our students manage to get to oh, yeah. great universities like King College London, University of Melbourne, University of Hong Kong, which is very well acclaimed, UBC. Almost all of these students also receive scholarships while well, added as well. Uh, Yenling, would you mind uh, just putting yourself on mute? Guys, uh, you can help me there. Okay. And I'd like to share with you some other areas that I haven't addressed yet. Fairview above and beyond. I'm going to share with you about the Duke of Edinburgh, Fairview Edgy Resort, Fairview National Expeditions, and then I'm going to share with you about Fairview. Okay. Because now, the, the f one very important problem is that students do not take their education outside the classroom. And they spend so much time in the classroom and they don't learn about life and nature. And their education is not well-rounded and holistic. We address this by our suite of, like the Duke of Edinburgh, the Fairview Resort, Falcons and International Ex Expeditions. So the Duke of Edinburgh Award program is a prestigious program that's awarded from the UK to our students when they accomplish a set of tasks. It's yeah. a well-recognized students with physical tasks, um, students to complete service activities, uh, students uh, go on expeditions and nature trails, and they accomplish all sorts of activities to accomplish it. Very few schools run the Duke of Edinburgh Award because it is so difficult to achieve. But all Fairview students are able to achieve the Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award, which is the best award in Fairview through the activities that we have in-house built into our curriculum. Once, uh, once a year, our students go to our own Fairview Edge Resort based in Port Dixon. Our students experience the outdoors through it purpose-built center over there. They learn all sorts of wonderful things like how to tie a knot and build a tent. They go through obstacles courses, trekking, cooking. It's a wonderful experience by the beach side. And to really top it off, you can see at the bottom right there, there's a section called the six dimensions of wellness. All of our Fairview students uh, go through a Fairview Falcons program where they undertake activities to earn badges in each of these six dimensions of wellness, making sure that their educational development is well-rounded and not just academic. We ensure that our students develop spiritually, environmentally, emotionally, intellectually, physically, and socially. And our students gain badges from their achievements as they go through the program. This, this uh, takes the form, this actually replaces uh, and goes on top of what other schools may call a co-curricular program as well. And as uh, Asari said, our students go on international expeditions. Our Fairview international expeditions are so different from every other school's international expeditions because our students don't go there just to look and see the sites. Most, most school trips are organized by tour operators and they just take you around to see the sites just as you would do in your normal family environment. 
but in Fairview, what happens is whatever you learn in the classroom gets brought into that expedition environment. So if you're learning geometry in the classroom, during the expedition, the learning continues into the expedition and you learn geometry there as well. If you learn about conflict, you'll be probably going to Cambodia where you see the killing fields in there and you'll learn, you take your learning in the classroom into the real world. Our students start, then start learning about issues of local and global importance. And this gives them an opportunity to discover what their purpose in life possibly could be once they see the challenges our world faces. Furthermore, our oldest students take university trips to the UK and Australia to find out about how they're going to uh, get to those universities and what, what's life they're all about. Many students in Malaysia go to foreign universities without ever seeing the, the country at all or understanding what it's all about. But our students take one week long trips to those locations and really experience life there before making their decisions about where to go. Now I'm going to share with you about the Everyone's a Musician program. Another wonderful thing that we do at Fairview. Fairview recognizes that in order to develop our students' creative instincts, which is an incredibly important part of their future and necessary, we need to develop their sense of artistic talent. And in order to do that, the school has invested in a massive Dominus arts venue, one of the most um, sophisticated arts venues in the entirety of KL. They have two Steinway pianos there. And for any pianist who understands, who, who knows this, the Steinways are beautiful grand pianos that play at the top of their level. We have recital studios as well, and another wonderful music program where every Fairview student is taught how to play an orchestral music instrument. This is important because learning an orchestral instrument as opposed to say a guitar, allows a student to play in an orchestra and to collaborate with others to the level of maybe 50 people at, at one time, whereas other simpler instruments like the drums or the guitar only allow you to collaborate with say three or four people. So all of our students are taught an orchestral instrument, every one of them, and at no extra charge to the students and our parents. Our Fairview Youth Orchestra has done so wonderfully, achieving a gold award in the International Music Arts Festival and the silver award at the same festival after only two years of learning. Now I'd like to turn the time over to a parent to share with us about the experience that she has felt, uh, sorry, about the journey that her, she feels her son has gone through as he has journeyed through Fairview. Dr. Anara, I'd like to invite you to take, uh, to speak about your journey as a Fairview parent. Good afternoon. Uh, my personal experience as a parent is very, I'm very proud of my son and I adore the IB program philosophy that it's not ordinary education. Uh, IB diploma develops uh, all his uh, talent through intercultural communication. I he respect his own Kazakh culture, but also he speaks Russian, now English, Mandarin, and Bahasa Milau. And I'm very proud that he's so, like, harmony developed, he, not only in his academic achievement, but also with his um, achievement in sport and also in music. It's very, it's our great pleasure when he plays flute at home and also when we spend time together in his swimming competition. I'm very thankful for Fairview International School and now I see how my child is became so talented and I think that it's of course all teachers in the school that helps him, also his friends and the community who support him. And also, I would like to say that as a parent, what could I do to support this IB program? 
I try to encourage also my child and uh, as you said, he will be active member of the society. It, it's very important that he's very active and this is that makes me very happy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Anara. Dr. Anara is a uh, associate professor uh, that has uh, joined us as one of our parents and is actively involved in the art scene, um, also as an art ambassador uh, to Malaysia. And we really appreciate your efforts also as a, a Fairview Angel, part of our parent group uh, that we have here in Fairview KL. Thank you very much for your sharing, Dr. Anara. We really appreciate you being here. Now, finally, I'd like to share with you all these wonderful things that we do. The IB program is a wonderful program and everybody should have it. But unfortunately, the problem is that in most places in the world, the IB program, as complicated and as challenging as it is to deliver, is also incredibly expensive. The prices for students to go to IB programs in Malay abroad in China and in Malaysia, in Hong Kong, Korea, Japan, and Singapore, all range from 20,000 US dollars to 50,000 US dollars a year. That's 80,000 ringgit to 200,000 ringgit a year. And there are many who are much more expensive. But in Fairview, we ensure, we believe in accessibility, that good quality education should be available to everybody not just those with wealth and power. And our fees reflect our philosophy there at a meager 21,000 to 45,000 a year in Fairview. We, Fairview could have easily charged far more for our services, but it is our steadfast, firm belief in serving our community that led us to ensure we never ever charge uh, those kinds of fees to make sure it is, access, it is ac as accessible as possible to our community. So with that in mind, I'd like, to sh uh, I'd like to say thank you very much to everybody who has come uh, to listen to this conversation about Fairview International School and our little introduction to us. There is so much more we can tell you. If ever you want to speak to us at all or myself, let any one of our counselors know and we'd be very happy to have a chat with you. So, Shaza, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to yourself for the question and answer session. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time. Thank you, Dr. Vincent, for the very informative session earlier. All right, um, now, parents, I believe I and I hope everyone has a solid grasp of information about the IB education in Fairview. So before we end this session or before we move on to the next agenda, do you have any question? If you do, you may unmute your mic and ask or you can even type it in the chat box in English, Mandarin or Cantonese. Okay, meanwhile, we're waiting for them, for the parents to type in their questions. Dr. Vincent, can I please get to can you please get to the last slide so the parents can scan the QR code and follow us on our social media? Um, this one. Yes. Thank you. Um, parents, you may scan the QR code and follow us on our social media. You can also contact respective counselors according to the campus that you're interested in. All right, any questions so far? No? Um, Dr. Vincent, can we please get to the other slide before this slide as well? So, parents, no, yeah, no, before this. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, this one. So, next week, parents, we will still have um, IB talk with our principal as well in Mandarin and Cantonese at 2 to 3 p.m. And anyone interested, you can, you may reach out to us. My number and our colleague's number is in the chat box. You can also reach out to your respective counsellors. And um, how about the next slide? The 
experiential part? Yes. Um, thank you, Dr. Vincent. So next week, we will have an experiential class as well. Parents who are interested, you may register yourself and your child can experience the IB at Fairview. All right. All right, lastly, um, we have the FB Live by our principal from JB Campus, Mr. Ariel. Um, can we get to the other slide? Yes, this one. Yes, Mr. Ariel will have a session next week at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So you can tune in our Facebook like you, scanned, like you scanned earlier and you can join this live event and you can hear from Mr. Ariel next week. Parents, any questions so far? You may type in, you may unmute your mic to talk to us. No? All right. Um, if there are no questions, I believe your counselors will be able to um, respond to you soon. Um, all right. Before we leave, I have a good news for you. We are offering a 100% application fee waiver for all of you here today who have joined our event. So you may reach out to the respective counselors to get your vouchers the, for the waiver, for the application waiver. Yeah? All right, if there are no further questions from the floor. Uh, yes. Sorry, um, I'd like to make a clarification for yes. Facebook Live event. Um, the date, sorry, is a typo, 23rd of May, next Saturday. I see, all right. Sorry. So, okay, thank you, Missy. Um, sorry, right, it is the 30th, 30th of May, two weeks later, not 23rd. Next week is Hari Raya. All right. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's a public holiday for us. So we will stick to 30th of May. Okay. Um, I think there? we have one question, uh, which I'd be very happy to answer. Uh, Mr. Yes. Kam Hong Lim asked, would you please suggest ways of adaptations, uh, adaptation for the kids in transition from traditional curriculum to the IB curriculum? Um, so thank you for your question. Um, it's a very common uh, issue that our parents ask us quite a lot. Um, if, you ex if my child is used to one way of learning, um, how, will, how will they adapt? Can they really adapt to this new world if he's never presented before? Suddenly he's required to present. Will he be able to adjust? Mm. So my, my, suggest my suggestion is um, the longer a child stays in traditional education, the, the stronger the bad habits will be. Um, there, there isn't a, uh, a slow transition process uh, that I can suggest to you. What I'd probably suggest is he needs to be in a new environment and from there the child will slowly pick up the skills. Now over time usually it takes about six months for a student to get the hang of uh, the IB way of learning. For example, in traditional schools, he'll be expecting the teacher to run revision classes before the exam so that he knows what questions are coming out during the exam. And in the IB program, there are no revision questions and there is no, uh, there is no special class so that you can figure out what exam that you have, uh, what questions are coming out in the exam. You have to develop your skills in the proper way. And so that takes some time to adjust into it. In order to learn how to present, there really isn't a way unless you present. One of the things that you could do at home to uh, prepare your child to, uh, to thrive in a future that's relevant, uh, a relevant method, would be to perhaps adopt active learning strategies with your children, to talk to them about what they're excited about, to discuss with them about what gets their blood going, are they interested in certain things, and get their blood boiling and excited about learning in life. That would be one of the greatest things a parent can do for their children, to spend that time listening to their child instead of telling them what they should be excited about, letting them try different things and fall and fail with 
uh, within your warm embrace. If I was to prepare any child for uh, the IB environment, it would be that to help them uh, determine that sense of excitement and purpose about life. That would be the most wonderful way to do it. Um, okay, so the QR code, uh, okay. Reja has asked uh, about the QR code and he wasn't able to scan it. Okay, so here's a QR code. So if your child does not speak English that much, how can they, how quickly can they uh, pick it up and be able to attend the class? So what we do in Fairview International School is, um, we assess every child's English cap uh, capability at the outset when they be begin the application process. Then when they, uh, we introduce them into the classes, we, they also have an English support group after school to, so to bring up their English levels. Uh, what we tend to find is that there is, there's no point uh, trying to swim and learning to swim by reading a textbook. You've got to get into the water and swim, uh, albeit in a careful way, of course. You don't put any child into the water suddenly, but at least it's in a controlled environment. So we like to immerse our children straight into the mainstream environment so that they use English every single day. And that will accelerate their learning faster than any program. But of course, on top of that, the English support program will make sure that that learning that knowledge comes along with the practice so we tackle the challenge in two ways we give them knowledge after school and they also practice their english during school hours as they are put in, immersed into the english environment i hope that helps your question uh, reja thank you very much kam hong leung for your question uh, and i hope that that's answered your question too If there are any right. other questions, just pop it up. Any other questions from parents? We'll be happy to address it. I can I add um so the support that we give to students other than the on the academic matters, we also will assign a buddy for any new students. So this buddy will be studying in the same class with the student and will be the best friend. So during the transitions, we, we believe that with their new friends in the school, will help them to get used to the school, to get very familiar with their teachers or IB programs. So we believe friendship is a very important factor. So all our students will be very happy to become a buddy for any new students who join us. And we will also assign mentor. So the teacher will be a mentor for the new students. So after school or during break time, lunch time, we welcome all the new students to make appointment to meet up with our mentor teacher. So we support students not only from their subject, but it's an overall support program to help the student feel happy and they like to come to school. All right, um, we have another question. Yeah, uh, so to what extent do you expect parents to engage in school activities? So this depends a little bit between the primary program and the secondary program. Uh, in the primary years, uh, in the primary school, um, we encourage our parents to, well, actually for both programs, we encourage our parents to be as, as heavily involved as possible in your child's education. There, there really is no substitute for a parent being involved. Um, in their child's education. So as much as you can would be the best. There are opportunities that we create for you to be involved and we encourage you to be involved in every one of them where you can. So things like uh, speaking to the class, like doing guest talks to your classroom. You know, it's, it's very exciting when a child sees their parent giving a talk to their classroom. It's very, very, uh, a very proud moment for many of our parents, of our children. Also, uh, there are celebrations of learning. I share with you where the st your children present what they've learned. Now, parents, we really hope that you turn up to that one because there is a great joy when students get to present to the parents what they have learned. It's incredibly exciting for their, those kids. Um, there's, of course, report card days. There are 
uh, sports days, there's competitions uh, to be involved with. There are parent groups uh, to be involved in as well. There's fun fairs, there's uh, celebrations like Hari Raya and Chinese New Year, where we have our parents come and uh, join in with us as well. The more involved uh, a parent is usually, the more engaged with their learning the child is because very often the children see their parents getting engaged and they learn from that role modeling. Thank you, Dr. Vincent. All right. We will right. also invite parents, we will also invite parents to come join us to celebrate different festive celebrations. For example, Korean parents, they will be invited to the school to, to cook some Korean traditional food or the Chinese parent make some Chinese traditional dumpling or mooncake during festival time. So, and we make tanglongs, lanterns with parents. So we involve parents not only from academic or cultural point of view, but we like the parents to also explore what is the uniqueness of IB. And we believe that with the parents' support, because we need to develop IB students, we train and fully groom our IB teachers. We also working together with our IB parents at home and in the school in various activities. And we also have a very close communications with all our parents through school planner, class dojo, manage bag, emails, WhatsApp call, parents, WeChat, network. So we involve not only through physical, but also on all the social media platforms on all the WeChat, WhatsApp platform, we take their feedback. We work very closely with all our parents. For example, like um, today our parent ambassador. So we always invite her to come to KR campus, especially with our new white box and black box, our Arts Avenue. So she is really working very closely with us to develop a whole arts environment to inspire our students to appreciate the arts. So we appreciate and we will involve parents in many aspects. Thank you, Misty. Uh, there's another question about uh, from Kam Hong Leung again about the uh, career advice that we give our students. Uh, yes, the coordinators work with the students closely to uh, well, actually it begins in primary school where our students are engaged by the counselors of the school to do personality tests, to find out a bit more about themselves. And then they, they have this coaching program in the school where they write, they figure out what kind of goals they want to achieve in life and build based on those building blocks. Then in the senior years, they get shared opportunities, what possible career path they can through various a career weeks uh, and visits by professionals to the school and then of course there are career weeks where universities come to the school as well and I think you may have seen in our expedition the senior years go to the UK and Australia to do a university tour uh, trip as well to see them. Um, I believe this approach is extremely comprehensive um, and really helps our students figure out what they want to do in life very well. Thank you, Dr. Vincent. All right. Um, thank you for the question, parents. Um, if you wish to know any other information, you may post it out. We will wait for a few minutes here. Otherwise, you can also contact your counselor or even myself and Mr. Jonathan. Our number is in the chat box. Also, also parents, if you would like to know more about some of the other campuses, and um, yes, Fairview does everything learning-wise the same, but each campus has a little unique feature. Um, welcome to JB Campus, which is down near Singapore. Um, you know, feel free anytime to talk to us or post us questions, ask about our learning environment. Today, you've learned a lot from Dr. Vincent, but by the time you go away this afternoon and think more about it, you might have some more questions to post to us. Thank you, Mr. Ariel. All right, since there are no other questions, 
I would like to thank all the parents that have um, asked the questions earlier. Um, we would also like to, I would also like to re-announce the good news for all parents. We are offering a 100% application fee waiver for all of you here today who have joined our virtual event. So you may reach out to your respective counsellors to claim this. Right? Um, Alright, if there are no further questions from, from the floor, we would like to thank our parents and student ambassador, Dr. Anara and Mr. Aisari for joining us today. Also to thank all the principals today, Ms. T, Mr. Ariel, especially Dr. Vincent and also Ms. Michelle Lum. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for the informative session today, Dr. Vincent. You're very welcome. All right. <laughs> Great. If you have further questions, you may reach out to us. We will be able to address your concerns. Thank you for your time, parents. Have a great weekend and take care.